guys. So we've just found it's a strippy day. Oh my goodness. So guys, it's time to talk about this beautiful little snake that we found last night, the red adder, Bitsis rubida. After about four trips to two different locations, I finally came right and in the most unexpected way on the road home last night, literally after having given up. And it's an absolutely beautiful snake. Now obviously, as the name suggests, red adder, not all of them are red. It's very dependent on areas and localities. Your red morphs really come from uh, the Cedarburg area and then you get pastely oranges and different colors all along uh, the Cape Fold Mountains uh, towards PE. There's some beautiful ones out in PE as well as a very pinky pastely color. But with no further ado, let's pull out this little boy and have a look at him. Wow! This is Bitsis rubida. It's a red adder. They're from the mountain escarpment regions of South Africa, from Cedarburg, across the Cape Fold Mountains, all the way east into the very edge of the Eastern Cape. So this is a South African endemic, only found in mountainous regions, and they're extremely variable in color. As the name suggests, red adder, that's their most beautiful morph, but they're far rarer to find than your normal colorations, which is usually a very kind of silver gray palette. This one here is probably a mix between either a male or female red morph and a normal because it has this beautiful pasteling. The red adder taxonomically was previously falling under Bitsis cornuta as a lot of your other dwarf adders were. Your Bitsis albanica, inornata, rubida, all falling under the cornuta complex before taxonomy took on its next stage. And then when certain species were classified as their own species, like Albanica and um, Inornata, etc., then these guys were still classified under Bitis Inornata, meaning they were a very easterly population of Bitis Inornata, which occur in the Sneeuwberg. But in 2007, uh, Bill Branch, uh, through research, actually elevated the species to its own species. So this is now considered Bitsis rubida, where previously he's really, really upset with life. Hey boy, it's okay bro, just chill out. It's okay. So this is indicative of your Bitsis species. They're very, very huffy puffy, letting you know that you must leave them alone. I'm venomous, don't touch me. He's trying his best. To avoid, uh, to avoid me. As you can see, he's trying to slither off and get away from me. So, not all snakes are out to get you. These guys are actually really difficult to find, believe it or not. Uh, incredibly cryptic snakes. As you can see, they blend very well into the environment. And the reason you've got different morphs of this snake is because of the different rock formations they found in. In this area, you have far more redder rocks, especially in the Cedarburg, a very, very red rock in the Cedarburg, hence them being extremely red. So in more, in different environments where there's different sort of rock formations and colorations, these guys vary a lot in color. So it's very dependent on the rock type will be the color of the snake, usually. So the venom of Bitsis rubida is quite similar to that of other bitters, dwarf bitters species associated with necrosis, swelling, and a lot of pain. So a big bite from one of these would be very painful. Uh, the males range from around 30 to 35 centimeters, with the females up to about 40 centimeters. Average length of around 30, I'd say. So this is a pretty adult male rubida, and he's out on the lookabout because it's that time of the year where he's out looking for females. The conservation status of the Bitsis rubida 
because of them being quite widespread across the Western Cape Fold Mountains and into the Eastern Cape. They also fall in a couple of protected areas. So they are in a non-vulnerable state, I would say, in terms of habitat loss and things like that. This uh, species is still quite stable, um, but they are heavily uh, poached for the pet trade, especially the red morphs uh, for over in Europe and America. So by keeping location secrets for these species and not telling everyone where they're found is of the utmost importance. These snakes, you know, someone can find the location of these snakes and with a couple of people coming through on a regular basis, these snakes could disappear off a mountainside very quickly. You can see how beautifully well the snake camouflages into its environment. You can see now it's, it's actually pretty crazy. By removing the rock, I placed the rock there just to present the snake to you guys a little bit better so you could see it. But look at it when once it hits the ground, how beautifully camouflaged these snakes are. There's these like scattered between red rock and gray rock and you can see how this mix between your common rubida, your grayscale rubida versus your red rubida would literally camouflage super well in their environment. Right now we're in the breeding season for Bitis rubida or most dwarf Bitis species and this little male where we found last night was out on a cruise looking for a female 100 percent it was really cold there was no reason for him to be out except to pass on his genes so these guys will breed in late winter early spring they'll seek out a female at which point they'll copulate for a couple of days and then the female will be gravid at which point she'll be gravid for about five six months and then she'll give birth to around three to eleven little babies and that's where the magic happens in terms of all these morphs, the different phenotypes that come up in a clutch. So this one, which definitely has red genes in it or red phenotypes, could have babies with another red female. And because he has red genes, that female would produce a lot more red babies, as well as a percentage of gray babies and then a percentage of mixed babies. So really, really interesting as to how these snakes adapt to the environment through cryptic coloration and how they can change over a couple generations to become more and more red or less and less red depending which of those offspring made it further. If the red offsprings made it further it means their camouflage worked better than the grey ones which is super super interesting. So Bitis rubida or the Bitis genus is split up into a couple different groups or clades and these guys form part of the rocky adders which is the rocky and the sandy adders which are your dwarf adders and these guys are very well adapted to these rocky environments in coastal scrublands, coastal feinbos, and all along the, the mountain ranges of southern Africa on the western side. They're beautifully adapted to this rocky environment. They'll be hiding under bushes and rock slabs and things during the day and in the early evenings and afternoons they'll come out to bask, hunt or find a female. These guys used to fall under the Bitis cornuta complex, as well as in Ornata, as well as Albanica, and a few of these dwarf Bitis were all thought to be the same snake, just from different areas with different colors. But eventually in Ornata, Albanica got raised up to their own species, and then this was considered a subspecies of Bitis in Ornata, so meaning a very uh, westerly morph of Bitis in Ornata, which is from the Sneerberg, and these guys from more the Cedarberg area. And in 1997, Bill Branch elevated this to its own species, which is now called the red adder. They vary from around 30 centimeters in length, average, and with your females being slightly larger than your males. So males at, an, at a maximum of around 30, 35, with females from 35 to around 40, and a really big one, just over 40. So just an incredible snake, a lifer for me and only two more species of uh, bitters left in South Africa to knock off after finding this one. So this is a huge success. And uh, now I just need to find the Berg Adder and the Southern Adder and then on to the Northern Bitters species. Hey guys, so we finished working with the beautiful Rubida. 
been an absolutely incredible day. Uh, we got some amazing B-roll and watched this beautiful snake move through its habitat. It's absolutely magnificent animal. Really, really privileged and feel honored to have worked with such a beautiful little snake and to have knocked Rubido off the list. Very excited to come back again and try and find a bright red morph. But uh, unfortunately, we didn't get the bright red one, but we still got a very beautiful male individual. So super stoked, but it's get about to get dark now. And we got a cruise, so I'm gonna pop this guy literally. We found him on this little stretch of road here, not even maybe 20 meters from here. But there's a nice clump of rocks and stuff in here, so I'm gonna release him in here, and he should be nice and cozy for the night. Uh, so here we go. like this video please do hit the subscribe button hit that notifications bell and remember to stand for what we stand on